When NVIDIA pushes efficiency and density to the extreme with 576 GPUs in a single rack, racing toward the ultimate single rack design, is there another path for Chinese companies through system engineering? The answer is starting to emerge. At its recent conference, Huawei laid out its Ascend roadmap for the next three years and, for the first time, put its self-developed high bandwidth memory, HIBL, on the table. This is not just a chip with attractive specs. It is a full-scale strategy that combines storage, interconnect, and software ecosystem. Today, let's break down this group battle system and see how it offers a different path from NVIDIA in the long race of US-China tech rivalry. According to Huawei's public schedule, in Q1 2026, the Ascend 950PR will be launched, followed by the 950DT in Q4 that same year. In Q4 2027, the 960 series arrives, and in Q4 2028, the flagship 970 debuts. Four tightly packed milestones signal that this is not a one-off release, but a year-by-year -year iteration. The key is that the 950PR will be the first to use Huawei's in-house HIBL 1.0 memory, planting a flag in the HBM space that has long been dominated by overseas giants. The message is clear. Computing power is no longer just about the peak performance of a single chip. It's about the entire system. Why the emphasis on system? Huawei openly admits that its single chip performance still lags behind NVIDIA. Its real bet is on super nodes and super interconnects. In simple terms, a super node links many physical machines through a low latency, high bandwidth network to form a single logical supercomputer. In this setup, compute, memory, and storage collaborate seamlessly, freeing training and inference from the limitations of single card capacity and bandwidth. Huawei's Atlas 950 Super PD can scale up to 8,192 cards, while the Atlas 960 Super PD expands further to 15,488 cards. Instead of cramming everything into one rack, Huawei turns an entire data hall into one giant machine. This stands in stark contrast with NVIDIA's approach. Reports suggest NVIDIA's NVL series has pushed per rack density to the extreme. The NVL 576, as its name implies, packs 576 GPUs per rack, drawing hundreds of kilowatts. One side looks like card count supremacy, the other like density supremacy. But the metrics are not identical. NVIDIA focuses on compute density per rack, while Huawei emphasizes scalability across racks and even entire data centers. Which is stronger depends on what benchmark you choose. The pinnacle tower of ultimate density, or the broad planes of rapid expansion. Let's return to HBM. High bandwidth memory is the lifeline of AI accelerators, with model inference throughput and latency heavily dependent on it. Until now, this space has been dominated by a few global giants, and supply restrictions have pressured Chinese companies. Huawei's response is a two-legged strategy. One leg is its self-developed HIBL, seeking control of key technologies. The other is a software-based workaround, technologies like UCM, which tier and schedule data by temperature. The hottest real-time parameters stay in HBM, the warm short, to mid-term activations go to standard DROM, and the cold external knowledge and long-term memory live on SSDs or even cheaper storage. This offloads pressure from HBM, making the overall system more cost-effective and resilient. Skeptics ask, self-developing HBM sounds great, but who solves mass production, yield, and packaging? That is indeed a major uncertainty. Huawei's answer is to approach the problem systemically. Use UCM and super nodes to offset weaknesses, shifting from everything must be the strongest to make the critical part strongest, keep the rest good enough. This engineering philosophy is very Chinese. Don't obsess over single point perfection, but treat wiring, power, cooling, scheduling, and fault tolerance as part of the equation of usable scale. Then comes ecosystem. Chips are just the starting line. Migrating models and frameworks is the end game. Huawei has been open sourcing tool chains like CAN to provide a developer experience close to CUDA. On the cloud side, Ascend has already adapted more than 160 third party large models, from general LLMs to multimodal to industry specific models, ensuring they can run smoothly. For many enterprises, the question isn't about the teraflops of a single card, but whether their existing models, data, and teams can migrate quickly and without runaway costs. The ecosystem is the answer to that question. Policy and market dynamics also play a role. Recently, 
Reports suggest regulators have guided major Chinese internet companies to reduce or even stop purchasing certain NVIDIA substitute models intended for China. This creates a window period for domestic compute providers. For Huawei and the broader Chinese supply chain, it means clearer demand signals and more market flexibility. It's worth noting that Huawei has extended its super node approach to general computing as well. With the Taishan 950 Super PD and its self-developed Gauss DB distributed database, Huawei is targeting replacements for mainframes, mid-range systems, and traditional database appliances. This is the second battlefield. On one side, AI training and inference workloads. On the other, the daily IT backbone of enterprises. If super nodes can succeed in both, the vertical integration from chips to systems to databases to applications will build a mode of stickiness and profitability. Of course, every path has risks. First, whether advanced packaging and high-end HBM yields and costs are controllable will determine the total cost of ownership. Second, making the software ecosystem as usable as CUDA takes time and requires developer buy-in. Third, ultra-large clusters bring real-world challenges of power, cooling, networking, and floor space with very different hidden cost structures depending on system design. Fourth, supply chain collaboration is a long game. Self-reliance does not mean isolation. Domestic substitution requires coordinated progress across the entire value chain. This rivalry is not a short fist fight in the ring, but a complex systems engineering race. NVIDIA is betting on extreme density plus mature ecosystem, doubling down on GPUs, NVLink, NVSwitch, and NVL servers. Huawei is betting on super interconnect plus tiered storage plus open ecosystem, focusing on scalability, deployability, and maintainability. Both paths have strengths and weaknesses. The winner will be the one who can turn theoretical best into scalable usable and prototype demos into production-ready deployments. That explains why Huawei keeps repeating that computing power remains the lifeblood of AI. As models scale from tens to hundreds of billions to trillions of parameters and beyond, moving toward multi-agent systems and long-context reasoning, storage and interconnect become even more critical. No single chip can hold the intelligence of the future. Organizing compute power is the real challenge. Huawei's answer is super nodes. NVIDIA's answer is ultimate single rack density and interconnect matrices. Whoever breaks through first in organizing ability gains the bargaining power of the next era. So back to our opening question. Can Chinese methods beat NVIDIA? The strength of Chinese companies lies in scaling engineering, breaking complex systems into manageable modules, then binding them with software and standards. Huawei's three-year roadmap may not surpass NVIDIA at the peak immediately, but in the dimensions of usable, available, and maintainable. It builds an independent and controllable path. This reduces reliance on external suppliers and gives the domestic industry chain valuable time to iterate. Three years from now, will the Ascend 970 go head-to-head -head with NVIDIA's next-gen platform? The answer depends on key variables, whether HIBL achieves mass production and ecosystem maturity, whether software workarounds like UCM prove effective at scale, whether supernode networking and scheduling can tame latency jitter, and whether developers are willing to make migration a top priority. If these pieces fall into place, China's compute gap will gradually close through systemic improvement. And what about the so-called million card level? In engineering terms, it's more of an upper-bound target for scalability than a present reality. What matters is that once the supply chain gains the ability to scale upward, even if deployments are only at the 100,000 level now, the future is already within reach. Scale and reliability don't arrive overnight. They come from countless trials, migrations, and failures followed by comebacks. Huawei's strategy is to use system strength to cover single-point weaknesses, collective intelligence to balance out chip-level gaps. NVIDIA's strategy is to use extremes to widen its lead and ecosystem to cement its moat. Neither approach is wrong. It depends on resources and target markets. For China, the best path is the one it can make work on its own. If you've watched this far, leave your choice in the comments. A. Bet on super interconnects and believe that group battle will outlast solo fights. B. Bet on ultimate single rack density and believe that pushing physical limits is the path to peak efficiency. Or C, bet on both, believing the real game changer lies in software ecosystems and engineering deployment. Your answer may well mirror the direction this industry takes over the next three years.